Hi, my name is Yvonne and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you some of my favorite romantic RV escapes and I'm going to show you how to make some delicious hot fudge. Before we start to make the hot fudge though, let's talk about those romantic RV escapes to get you in the mood. One of my favorite, vast, isolated, people-less romantic RV spots is Big Bend National Park in Texas. Big Bend National Park is on the southern border of Texas, right along the Rio Grande River, and it is spectacular. One thing that really surprised me down in Big Bend National Park was the spectacular sunsets absolutely unbelievable. The oranges and the pinks and the colors are fabulous. And interestingly enough, right around dusk when the sun gets ready to set, there are herds of javelinas rooting around for food all over the desert. They look like pigs, but they're definitely not. And they're hungry too. There are several gorgeous hikes in Big Bend National Park and right from the Rio Grande Village area you can go to Big Bend's first resort. It's actually a hot springs resort. The resort is now in ruins but you can tour the ruins of the town and you can actually soak in a natural hot spring that is right up against the Rio Grande River. I would say Big Bend is very, very high on my list of romantic RV escapes. So if you're looking for a place to get away where there aren't a lot of people, but there's a lot of natural beauty and things to do, Big Bend National Park is the answer for you. If you're more of a city person, let me tell you about my favorite city, the city by the bay, San Francisco. For a romantic RV escape, there's nothing better. Head down to North Beach, the Italian section of town, have an espresso or a gelato, sit at a little sidewalk table and watch all the passers-by. You can walk across the Golden Gate Bridge, which is amazing in itself, or visit the old Sutro Bath Ruins down near the Cliff House Restaurant. Everything there is fantastic. There's certainly something for everybody, and you won't be disappointed with your romantic escape to San Francisco. That's where I left my heart. Mackinac Island is another great romantic RV escape, although it's not really an RV escape because there's no motorized vehicles allowed on Mackinac Island except for the fire brigade. Mackinac Island sits off the mainland of Michigan in Lake Huron. There's a couple great little towns that you can camp at on the mainland, say St. Agnes or Mackinac City, and there's a few ferries that you can take over to Mackinac Island past some beautiful lighthouses. It's gorgeous scenery. You can certainly take your bicycle on the ferry, and you can even take your dog over to the island as long as you have a leash. It's a quaint little village, along with a Mackinac Island State Park, horse and carriages, all sorts of great things to do. You can wander around downtown and try one of their specialties, fudge. The Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island is where they filmed Somewhere in Time, back in 1980 with Chris Reeve, and Jane Seymour and it is just as romantic as the movie makes it seem. Any way you slice it, Mackinac Island is certainly something that you should do, a place that you should see with your sweetie as a romantic RV escape. Well enough of that romantic RV escape stuff. Let me show you how we're going to make our hot fudge. You will see how easy it is and once you try it you will agree that it is delicious. The ingredients are few, and we're going to start off with some unsweetened baking chocolate. And when they say unsweetened, they do mean unsweetened. If you try it, you'll find out. I like the Baker's brand unsweetened squares because they come in individually wrapped one ounce portions. I'm also going to use a third cup of light corn syrup. I'm going to use three ounces of unsalted butter. And I take my butter and I cut it up into little cubes. We're going to melt it. It just melts easier that way. I've got one cup of sugar, and I've got one cup of water, and I'm going to use two teaspoons of pure vanilla flavoring. 
By the way, just like in any recipe that you make, the quality of the ingredients equals the quality of the finished product. So when you're looking for some vanilla, make sure that you purchase pure vanilla extract, not imitation vanilla flavor extract. It really does make a difference. What we're going to do is we're going to take our six ounces of unsweetened baking chocolate and our three ounces of unsalted butter and we're going to put them in a pan on the stove on very low heat and we're going to melt them. So let's get started. Our stove is on about three or four, very low heat. We'll turn it down a little bit once we get all of the chocolate in. But what we're going to do is unwrap these, get them in and get them melting. This is what it looks like. I'm going to set it right down on the bottom of the pan here and I'm going to get my butter. Three ounces of butter, again, I've cut them up into pieces. I'm just going to set them at the bottom of the pan so they'll all melt together. And the chocolate and the butter are just about melted. I'm going to check it, stir it around a little bit with my favorite paddle here, and then I think we can add the other ingredients. The next thing we're going to add is one cup of boiling water. And I've boiled my water in my microwave, and it's bubbling, and it's hot. So one cup of boiling water right into the chocolate butter mixture. We're going to add our one cup of sugar and we're going to add our one third cup of light corn syrup. Now we're going to stir everything together to blend it. Now comes the hard part of making hot fudge. We're going to let this come to a gentle boil that's a little bit more than a simmer and we're going to let it bubble and pop for about 10 minutes without stirring it, shaking the pan, or anything else. And that's the hard part, to just leave it be for the 10 minutes. But that's what we shall do. It's been 10 minutes now and our goal is for the hot fudge to be thick and smooth. So let's test it and see if it's done. Mmm. Oh yeah. It looks just perfect. What we want to do is turn the burner off. We want to move this off of the heat and now we're going to add our pure vanilla. We're going to put two teaspoons in then we're going to stir it around. Depending on what your flavor sensations are, you can use any type of extract that you like. You can use a mint extract, a rum extract, or if you're a banana lover, you can even use a banana extract, but I like the vanilla. This recipe makes two to three cups of hot fudge. And what I like to do is use these great little half pint canning jars. This happens to be a wide mouth jar. That's just my particular preference. But each half pint jar will hold about one cup. So let's put it in the jars and see how close to three cups we got. Well, I think we've done a really great job here with our hot fudge. We've got three delicious cups of hot fudge in our half pint jars. What I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the hot fudge in the jars to cool. I've got them on a little rack here, but you can also cool them on your stovetop rack. Once they're cool, I'm going to put the lid on them, and there's certainly enough for you to have for yourself and share with your friends and your family. Put them in your refrigerator. These nice little jars are pretty sturdy. That's another reason to get the wide mouth jars. And they'll find that your hot fudge will last for several months, but I have a feeling that it really won't be around for several months. When it's time to use your hot fudge, spoon a little bit out into a microwave safe bowl or a microwave safe coffee cup. Heat it up for just a little bit of time until it's hot and bubbly and then serve it over your favorite flavor of ice cream with pound cake or even dip bananas and strawberries in it. It really will be delicious. That'll do it for our hot fudge show. You can find this recipe and others you've seen on the RV Cooking Show on our website at www.rvcookingshow.com. Thanks for being our guest today. We hope to see you back again. And won't you be my Valentine? Right here, you and me on the RV Cooking Show. <laughs>